tell us in the comments. Don't forget to hit the like button and share this video with everyone you know. Said, which is really funny, if you believe that God is the one and only Jesus, God, whatever you believe in, then what you want to do is you want to say that God was gossiping about me. God took away my job. God took away whatever. Because when you replace it with God, you have to know everything comes to you from God. And so when you yeah. replace that a person or a thing, God cheated on me, God did this, because then you start to laugh about it because you can bring humor and you can shift how you're seeing things. Yeah. And I think that's the power in your book because you have so many anecdotes about your personal life. I particularly <laughs> like the part where you were supposed to get a massage and the therapist tells you to meditate. Can you please share to us what happened in that instant? Yes. Very early on in my spiritual journey, I was about 21, 22, and a friend of mine, Natalia Pahomchek, if you're ever in Hawaii, go visit her in Honolulu, best massage therapist ever. She was in massage school at the time, and every Tuesday I would go for a massage with her. And one Tuesday she says to me, Jen, it would really help you if you could meditate for 30 seconds before the massage. It'll make it so much more enjoyable. And I looked at her, I said, Natalia, do you know what it's like in my head? I have a million thoughts like da -da 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 -da. I said, I, I could not meditate for one second, let alone 30 seconds. And now of course, the irony is that I probably spend anywhere from one to three hours a day in meditation. Wow. And that's why we created the Coalition for Global Unity that Want to Wake TV is to teach people all the different ways you can meditate to music, to breathe. Yeah using a pyramid there's a pyramid spiritual society there's so many ways to meditate and that's yeah. why i help people because i know what a struggle it was for me when i started and i'm deeply deeply grateful that i have 50 to 100 different ways now that i can meditate and ground myself every day yeah and thank you for sharing that because it's such a powerful thing to experience especially one of the things that i learned about prayer and meditation from Dr. Catherine Bunder, who's actually one of my idols in metaphysics. She was saying from time to time, your soul would want to do a different practice. Sometimes you want affirmative prayers. Sometimes you want to go into the silence. So you have to uh, put yourself in the space where you're not judging yourself because you're not constantly doing one thing and you feel that you're falling short of your expectations towards yourself. Especially one of the things that we're trying to juggle here is how does a person put a balance in their spiritual life, in their personal life, in their professional life? Because one of the things that I share uh, with you and resonate with the things that you're sharing with everyone is that Work is actually very spiritual if you look at it. And at the same time, you need to have the tools to make your journey, whether it's your personal life and your professional life, more balanced and harmonious. Because we can only handle so much actually in terms of our conscious level of awareness. Especially we can be kind, be compassionate. There's a section in the book, I think it's chapter or um, tool nine or ten is inner child work. Another mm -hmm. thing I do every day is I put my right hand on my heart and I visualize myself at whatever age my little girl might be, maybe five or six, and I talk to her in a loving, kind way. And the more yes. that we can give ourselves what we need, the more that we can accept ourselves, talk to ourselves, notice if you're feeling angry or sad. I will often ask my inner child, you know, hey, sweetheart, how are you feeling today? And if she's feeling angry, I acknowledge that she's feeling angry. Tell me about that. Tell me what you're angry about. And it, it yeah. can be very powerful to self-soothe and to heal so that yes. you can be the best version of yourself in the world. Yes. I love that we're talking about this because last May during Mother's Day, I initiated a meditation for me and my mom and we always had a very interesting powerful spiritual relationship because one of the things that my mom helped me a lot with was learning how to read i sucked at english before but my mom took a great deal of time love and patience to help me read and polish my english and 
from a line of seven from one semester, my mom helped me out. You know, it just took one semester and my grades went up to the 90s above. Wow. And it was such a powerful experience for me because I got 99 over 100 because of mom's help, uh, taking the time to help me read. And I'm sharing this because I realized when you brought up the inner child, a lot of my inner child issues had a lot to do with me and my mom. Mm -hmm. uh, especially, she's such a nice and kind person, but it also took a lot for her to understand where I was coming from because she was also very religious. Mm -hmm. And I knew that she loved me deeply, but she also had to understand how she was going to relate to her other friends and the pressure of having to deal with a gay daughter wow. <laughs> so that inner child thing when i was doing that uh for last may while i was reversing the process where now i'm the parent and my mom is that child mm. um, i was so amazed because that particular week and the week after mom and i had such a smooth sailing <laughs> relationship and i love that you mentioned that being spiritual means having to go through the different dimensions of your human experience and having that awareness as well where you can go through that different range of human emotion but still have that awareness to comfort yourself and not go through self-condemnation because i think that power comes from having the awareness to tell yourself in the middle of you about to blame yourself where you're telling yourself that I love you mm. and it's such a powerful thing so thank you for sharing that but into sales what do you think would be an effective way for me to close a sale if I'm going to use a spiritual tool to get the job done <laughs> well that, that one of my I teach people your manifesting what you want is something I call a statement of intent and a daily declaration. I first spoke about this in my first book, Stop Hoping for Hunting, a Job Seeker's Guide to Find a Dream Job. I think it was in chapter five on the mental side of the job hunt. So what you want to do is you want to pick a by one day. I'll share with you a story first and then I'll tell you how to do it. So there was a woman who was laid off from her job in 2012. And that was at the time when everything was terrible. Nobody had jobs. She was really distraught. And it was November. It was right before the holidays. So I sit down with this job seeker and she is so sad. And she says to me, Jennifer, I'm the breadwinner. And I literally just lost my job and I have two children and a husband. I don't know how I'm gonna get through this. I said, okay, great. Are you willing to try something on? And this is what I would invite all of our viewers to try on and you as well, Reverend. What I want you to do is I want you to write down by when you want to find your job and what it's going to look like. So I said to her, you know what? When was the last time? First, you have to look at your perspective. If you look at the fact that it's going to be hard and that you're not going to be able to close the sale, you're going to prove yourself right because our thoughts become words, which becomes things. And so I said, what's the last time that you had two months off with your family around Christmas and Thanksgiving? And she looked at me and said, never, I've never had that time off. I said, great. So what I need you to do is I need you to trust with perfect certainty that this technique I'm going to teach you is going to help you get your job and that you're going to have a gift of having these two months with your family. So we yes. came up with her statement of intent. So you write it out either on a piece of paper or you can write it on a smartphone or your computer, whatever you prefer. So she wrote down, <laughs> by December 30th, it's, it's great. So she wrote down by December 31st, 2012, mm -hmm. I have a position paying me $60,000 or more within seven miles of my house that I love going to work every day. Now, there are many spiritual teachers out there. I love Joe Dispenza's work and many others who say, don't put a time frame down. I can only speak from the thousands of people I've taught this to and how it's worked for them. I am a huge advocate of picking a by when date. So you put in by when, what you want to happen, and you write all this out. So she wrote it all out. Now, here's step two. Most of us write things down. Step two is the part which will cement it and which will allow you to manifest whatever you want, the sales, your house, your soulmate, this works for anything. 
So you write down by when, but then the first thing you do, well, you open your eyes, Rev Reg, and what you do mm -hmm. is you say, by December 31st, 2012, I am earning $60,000 or more. I always love to add or more in there with ease and effortlessly at a job within seven miles of my house doing what I love every day. That then becomes what I call your daily declaration. Now you only need to say it one time, but the moment your eyes open in the morning, you want that to be the first thing that you speak and you want to say it as loud as you possibly can. For your putting your love, your heart and spirit out there and for all the stuff I've read that you went through that none of us will ever know that you went through to be able to be the human being that you are today that is so generous and kind and full of spirit and of service. I acknowledge you for everything that you do to help others. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jen. And I know that I'm also very blessed that you graced our show. I, you know, I learned so much today. <laughs> and it's such a different experience because all the stuff that you taught me, it feels like, hey, you know what? I know certain things already, but you're actually bringing it to the next level, playing game. And I look forward to having you here in the Philippines. I'm very sure there are a lot of BPOs here, contact centers, that will benefit a lot from your book, 101 Spiritual Tools for Uncertain Times. I wish I had read the book 10 years ago <laughs> because I wasn't exactly employee of the month. But if I had your book <laughs> at that time, it would be so much different. But on the upside, it helped me a lot because that was also the start of me being self-employed. And when I was self-employed, I squeezed in all the passion that I had and it really helped me out with doing what I love to do and realizing that if you're doing what you love to do, all of a sudden the self-discipline kicks in and it's an amazing thing. I hope I can have you again, Jen, next time because next time I want us to talk about more about living your life by design, which obviously you've embodied uh, very much in your work. And thank you so much again. And before we end the show, I just want to invite everyone to just affirm with me this powerful prayer of protection. And it's written by James Dillard Freeman. They actually brought it to the moon. <laughs> and it's something that's uh, worked out very well. And even during the Cuban uh, War, they affirmed this prayer and a lot of the soldiers actually used it and went back to the States safe and sound. So I invite everyone now to simply close your eyes. Take a deep breath in and out. Feel that inner peace in your heart. And affirm with me, the light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is and all is well. And so it is. Satnam. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. And Stay tuned for the next episode. Only here on Z81 Radio, Manila.